All right, this matrix is very similar to matrix 29. We have some objects. And then we have some operators or functions who do some kind of action on the objects. So these are our operators. So we notice that there are two kinds of operators. There is the single arrow one and the double arrow one. Double arrow, double arrow, single arrow, single arrow. So let's split them up here. This is our single arrow operator. And down here, we consider our double arrow. And then we can ask, what do they do? And if we consider mm, the double arrow first, going from this object to this object, from top to bottom, we notice that it's the same shape, except that the colors are swapped. So it seems like the double arrow will make the colors swapped. The single arrow takes a narrow rectangle or thin rectangle and turns it into a square. So we can express it as it squares things. So this is our theory and let's try and apply it to, to this object. We have um, this figure here. We have a single arrow, so it should turn into a square. So that would be like, like this. All right, that's, that's our first idea. Then we can look here, we have this figure here and the colors are going to be swapped. So that would be also, that would be also this figure here. So that checks out as well. So it seems that's a very good uh, suggestion for our solution, but hmm, we have some action as well. Or you could you could say that we have some action applied by our centerpiece here. We have um, this operator with a direction, let's say upwards, and then this operator compared to the first one is rotated forty five degrees clockwise. So we have some kind of operation here with clockwise. This one is clockwise rotation by 45 degrees. And we can check that this one, this guy here, also rotates 45 degrees. So we might guess that these operators, they not only have this, this one action where it either squares things or, or swaps colors, but that they also, they dictate direction, maybe. If they dictate direction, then if this one points upwards, so then this is the top, then if we rotate it 45 degrees, this one 45 degrees rotated, this one 45 degrees rotated, this one is a, a rotator of 45 degrees, then the top is going to be here the 
yellow part here is going to end up here. Teal color here is going to end up here. And let's just say the black one is going to end up here. And the triangle with the purple and yellow is white here. Then it swaps color. So it's going to end up black. So that would be this one here is going to end up black. And this one down here is going to be white. So the solution is either this guy here or this guy here. So let's rule out all the others. It's not this one. 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 So it's either this one or this one. And I know what the solution is, the, 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 the kind of official solution. And the official solution is that indeed there is some clockwise rotation. If people were to argue that, well, it might as well be this one because, yeah, why do we care about the, the clockwise rotation? I wouldn't disagree with, with, with people saying that because we never actually see the clockwise rotation actualized. It, it, it doesn't happen on any object yet. It may happen to this one, but it never happens. It happens to the, the operators, but we don't know if they kind of inherit the rotation, so they apply to the objects as well. Anyway, the solution is either F or H. The official solution is F. We have some clockwise rotation by 45 degrees, actualized by these operators down here. Maybe they have kind of inherited it from going through the, the middle here.